Hey everybody, it's Ron from Ron's Basement. Thank you for joining me today. I am not going to lie to you. I'm not doing well. Um, the last week, the last several months, um, if you are like me and heavily invested in the gold mining sector, uh, precious metals mining sector, it's been a tough, tough ride. Um, I'm starting to feel like uh, maybe I'm getting PTSD or something, not to make light of that. And I'm somewhat not joking. Um, watching kind of, um, I guess you would say, wealth or, um, you know, savings, investments, whatever, deteriorate in value, value. That's what I'm trying to say. Man, it's... Uh, I sleep. I don't sleep as good as I used to. Uh, I eat. My appetite's not quite all that great. And man, the last couple weeks have just, for me, have been brutal. Um, and it's been this kind of up and down ride here for the last, well, six months I got back in heavily. I know it's even been longer than that for some of you. So um, anyway, uh, I guess it is what it is. You know, they say you got to be tough. You got to be you know, to be invested in this sector, blah, blah, blah. Well, this is tough. <laughs> this is tough. You know, I'm still hanging in there, but, you know, it's tough. And, you know, the way I play this is zero debt, uh, period, in my personal life. No mortgage debt, no debt, no debt, period. Nothing. Um, and uh, and then I have a what I call like a cash buffer on top of the assets that I own. So, you know, the house and uh, all that stuff and then some, a cash buffer. And then about when you add those two together, about an equal amount invested in the precious metal mining stocks. Most of that remainder invested, not all of it, but a big majority of it. Um, and that invested in four companies, Fortuna, Equinox, First Mining Gold and um, Brixton Metals, kind of in descending order. Brixton's the smallest of my allocation of the big four, and then a couple other smaller holdings. But, um, man, it has been a really, really crazy ride. I was watching a video interview with Ross Beatty, who I have a great deal of respect for, the chairman of Equinox. He's a super well-respected guy in the industry. And it was an interview from, I think, January of 2020, so right before... COVID hit, and he was talking about the gold market in general and um, his thoughts on it. And at that point, he said, now well, we're about maybe in the fifth inning or the fourth inning of a gold bull market. And uh, I think the price of gold has actually gone up since then. But it feels like uh, if this were the fifth inning, that a storm has rolled in and we have a rain delay. <laughs> And it almost feels like it's rained so much that they might call the game off. So I'm hoping the sun comes back out and um, we start to see some positivity for the price of gold. I mean, the price of gold got whacked this week. You know that if you are interested enough to still be watching this video. Uh, it was a tough, pri uh, tough price week for gold and silver. Um, and, you know, in particular, the mining stocks. When I look at some of the uh, comparisons from uh, years back, it's just, you know, it, uh, it's been rough, right? If you held these stocks through, like, the summer of 2020, the GDXJ was at 66. I think today it's at, like, 37, um, like a 40% or 45%, I don't know, a big percent drop in just the junior mining index uh, altogether. I mean, even in like the last couple of weeks, the index has dropped, I don't know, 10, 15 percent. Um, and I'm sad to say that my stocks probably outdid that. So nonetheless, um, you know, about the, I'm going to say the only positive thing, but the positive thing, you know, things are still really screwed up, right? With the debt and all that crazy stuff, whatever. And I mean, it just feels like the market is gold and the market in general is pricing in, you know, so like so many rate hikes for this year. Um, I think what happened this week was, you know, the Fed was even more hawkish than a lot of people had anticipated. Right. So that whacked the price of gold. But you'd hope at some point here we're going to get to a, um, oh, a period or a point where, you know, this hawkishness is 
is, you know, it's already kind of priced in, right? And, you know, can they get, can they continue to get more hawkish? Um, I don't know. I guess anything's possible. Um, I sure hope not. <laughs> I sure hope, you know, I don't want to say hope, but um, I think long run, we all have a thesis on where the price of gold and silver should be. However, uh, in the short run, we can hit these bumps, which feel like major turbulence at times. And I'd say we hit some major turbulence. And, um, you know, I think most of the weak, weaker and mid strong to weak hands have sold and gotten out of this market, given up already. Um, and the ones that gave up sooner, you know, probably have benefited from that. The ones that are given up now, I don't know, you know, uh, when things turn around, if things turn around, um, you know, the, the gold price of gold and the price of gold mining stocks and, and silver mining stocks could have a long way to run. So, all right, guys, sorry, I'm not Mr. Positive today. It's just been a, it's been rough and, you know, I'm in good, I'm in good shape. I have to remember that, right? You know, like no debt, no margin, anything like that. But boy, still to see that kind of section of my net worth, that half section that's invested mostly in precious metal mining stocks, seeing it just kind of be obliterated um, or severely damaged is, uh, it's not any fun, right? It's kind of painful. So anyway, thanks for watching. I'd be interested to hear your comments and critiques, and uh, I will talk to you soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.